Good afternoon. How's everybody doing today? First and foremost, I want to thank God, higher, Yah, Almighty. Praise be to the Most High for all of His blessings. Everything. Uh, thank you to His Son, Yeshia, and to the Mother of all wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh. First and foremost, I want to give all glory to the Most High, because without me, without Him, none of this, none of this would be possible. None of the wisdom I've accumulated, knowledge, faith, him, He deserves and is entitled to all the glory. Once again, we are vessels. Today, I'm just going to talk. You know, I'm not I just want to talk. I'm not going to do really any Bible study. But more so, I want to talk about meditation and how most people skip that part of the process due to the fact that their lives are going and moving a thousand miles per hour. As soon as you wake up, alarm clock, get stuff ready, school, work, you know what I mean? It's moving, it's moving, it's moving. When in all actuality, <clears throat> we are supposed to put time aside for this, um, as well as prayer. Um, but if you like me, I pray on I pray on a run. I pray in my head every day, every time, every second, every minute. So, but meditating is different. Meditating, you really have to actually be still and know that He is God. Um, actually have to close yourself from the outside world and to just connect internally spiritually with God connect on that higher level of frequency um, it's not easy when you start it's not you when you change your mindset to telling yourself you don't want nothing easy then everything becomes easy. Um, it's a process. Rome wasn't built in a day. So don't think you're going to get something out of the first day, the seventh day, the sixth day, the tenth day. It's a continuous process and it takes faith because most people give up meditation. If they don't get what they hear other people get, if they don't get what they think they should get, then they give up. But we know that endurance and long suffering we must count as joy. We must endure to the end. So we must not give up on anything, especially when this is something that we must do to connect with our higher creator, the one and only universal God that created the heavens and the earth, the rivers and the mountains. So when we talk about meditation, it is essential, it is necessary, as well as prayer. It goes hand in hand. You know, when you pray, you kind of, I can't speak for everybody, but when I pray, I kind of intercede for others and pray for forgiveness of others and blessing of others, including my enemies. And I kind of thank, I kind of thank God for everything. When I meditate, I kind of do the same but I'm more relaxed. I'm more just just being free. I'm not forcing anything. I don't have to think about nothing. I could just let my thoughts come and go, you know, come and go. And allow God to speak through my thoughts, but knowing and discerning which thoughts are from God and which are not. It's no particular way to meditate. It's no specific way. There's no right way to meditate. Same as there's no right way to pray. You know what I mean? It's no curriculum. You don't have to do this first, then do this, then do this. You do what's in your heart. You know what I mean? God will put it on your heart. Yeshua will put it on your heart. The Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh will put it on your heart. Everybody is different, so what what may seem to work for 
for one person may not work for you. So this is why an intimate personal relationship is a must. It is necessary. It is necessary. It's a necessity. I can attest that when you come out of your meditation state, that you feel much better. You know, your ideas are more fresh. You know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like being in NASCAR. You know, you just you run around probably like fifty laps, right? And you when you and when you get out that car, you're like all over the place. Like, whew, that was crazy. Even when like a adventure ride. And then the meditation is the calmness it brings back to your original state. Like, it's a reset. You know, it's like, okay, you was just, all right, reset now. All right, now go back out to the world. So, in the Bible, it mentions meditation a lot of times. Like, and it's a reason why it's not mentioned today in our society. And it's a reason why meditation is not in schools you know what i mean if you really think about it if you really think about it it's a reason why you know it's something they know you know that we don't know you know so i'm just going to read a couple of bible verses that mentions meditation just so you know that it, it it's a it has to be a part of our life as much as as much and as newly as it is to us because we wasn't taught this from young, we have to have the discipline to incorporate it in our lives, in our daily lives. Um, Psalm 1-2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Most High, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Psalm 19-14, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 119.15 I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. Psalms 104.34 My meditation of him shall be sweet. I will be glad in the Most High. Um, Psalms 49, 3. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. So, we see, and there's, there's plenty of more. Psalm 63, 6. When I remember thee upon my bed, and meditate on thee in the night watches. It's very important. It's very important. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You know. Go into this new dimension of exploring. Not looking for something to get out of it, but looking to please God. If you never meditated, go into this as not to Look for something for yourself, but to please your your, your 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 creator, your higher being, the universal God, one and only. You know, obedience is better than sacrifice. This is, this is you becoming obedient. This is you putting the world on pause, taking time out just to conversate or hear or listen to God as he speak to your heart while the world is closed out from around you. And I just wanted to share that because I'm just starting this journey on meditation, you know. But throughout my years I've seen the 1% mentioned that they meditate. If you don't meditate, they, don't, they always mention meditation, but I'm, I never, I'm like, nah, I can't, I can't, I can't. You hear that? I can't, I can't. 
See, that has to change. How can I? <laughs> How can I? You know what I mean? Once you change your whole subconscious thinking, you become un unlimited. You, be you, you, be you have access to unlimited power through the glory of the Most High. But you're going to have to fight your conscience. Your conscience is going to tell you, oh, this ain't going to do nothing. This ain't doing nothing. Oh, you're wasting your time. Oh, I don't know. Put this out. Like, you know, that's your conscience. But you're going to have to fight it because we're at a stage where we have to reprogram. We have to unlearn and reprogram our subconscious to what we deem as positive enforces. Creativity. I can. I will. I am, you know, stuff like that. I see a difference. I've been doing this for about, you know, some change. Now, I'm not going to, I don't know the specific amount of time, but I feel a sense of peace every time I come out of my med meditative state. I feel a sense of urgency to be creative, to get things done, to... Please and to inspire and to motivate not only myself but the people around me and the people who I touch via social media or via in the streets. Take it from me. This is this is going to be a journey, you know. And if you're like me, I've transformed my mind to think and to believe that. I don't want nothing easy. Everything I want, I want it to be hard. That's how I embrace life. Because I already know life is not going to give you what it wants. It's going to give you whatever it decides. And you're going to have to deal with it. So instead of disagreeing, letting, letting life circumstances break you down emotionally, you learn to embrace it. So every journey becomes an embracement. And once you program that into your mind, you're on your way. You know, nothing can hold you. You've broken all barriers. You you no longer say I can't. You say how can I? You know. You no longer say why me? You say why not me? What you think bad, what they programmed us to believe was bad, that something may happen in our life, you may say, you may get down. I've learned to say thank you, God. Why would I only thank you for good and I thank you for bad? But in all actuality, I don't even believe in bad because Romans 8.28 tells us, for all things turn good to those that love God, you know? So, my thing is, what's the wisdom and lesson I can get out of it so I can inspire others and help others? So, that's just my thought on meditation, you know? And I think we all should incorporate it in our daily lives. There's no time limit. Don't get stuck on the surface. Just go. You know, just do it. You know, the goal is to please the most high. The goal is to build a stronger, strengthened, intimate, personal relationship with the most high. I can't build a relationship, personal relationship with the most high through another human being. Because when I get there in front of the most high, that human being Nine times out of ten is not going to be with me on my day of judgment. If they were able to be with me, they would be able to be buried with me. It's only, that's why there's only one person. It's always one person that only fit in the casket. It's a reason for that. Um, so, God bless y'all. And all glory goes to the Most High. I take none. I take no glory. None. I don't. None. I'm nothing. But He put on my heart to express this message that. 
we it's time to get closer. It's real close. Um, time is running out, but what we do in our time that we have now will inspire those to come. God bless you all. I pray you all have a beautiful and productive day. Hallelujah.